They're still right here. Right here. Hi, I'm Kevin Blinkoff from On The Water Magazine, and today I'm going to talk about fishing for bonito and albies from a kayak. Bonito and alby fishing is some of the most exciting fishing you can do, whether it's from shore, from boat, or from a kayak. But I think fishing from a kayak is really special for these fish. You get a different perspective on them. Um, it's very visual. Bonitos and albies, it's all about seeing them coming up to the surface and feeding. And when you're on kind of eye level and you're in a kayak, you get a really good view of that. It makes it even more exciting. Kayak also really gives you an opportunity to put yourself in good position to cast to those fish. When you're fishing for albies or bonito from a boat, sometimes you can be tempted to run and gun, to race after schools, and that can be ineffective sometimes because you end up spooking the fish and putting them down, or you run to one area where the fish are and they pop up where you just were. So one of the great things about a kayak is it kind of forces you to slow down. You can park yourself in an area where the fish keep popping up and, and stick around there. You're not so tempted to race down the beach to go to another school. And a lot of times I'll find I'm out there in a kayak and all the boats have left to go fish another pod while I'm sitting there, fish pop up right in front of me. Now when it comes to fishing for bonito and albies, your gear is really important because a lot of times catching them or not catching them comes down to being able to cast it to them. Um, get a cast into them, get your lure on them and reach them. And that's important really if you're fishing from shore, boat or kayak. But especially from a kayak, there are some certain concerns, some certain things to think about with your gear. For one thing, when you're in a kayak, you can go a little lighter. Compared to being on shore, you can actually chase down the fish a little bit more. You can use the kayak like drag, so when an albie is running away from you, it'll pull the kayak, that's part of the fun. So you don't necessarily need such heavy gear. And with lighter gear, a little bit lighter rod, you not only enjoy the fight more, but you can really pitch lures farther. When it comes to casting far, I really, I like spinning gear. I find an eight foot rod works really well. Also, Albies and Benito, they tend to switch directions and run around a lot. That long rod will let you reach around the bow of a kayak. Sometimes the fish will run behind you, let you go back over your head. So I recommend about an eight foot rod, seven six maybe at the shortest. So this is a G Loomis E6X inshore rod. It's an eight foot rod. It's rated heavy for 10 to 20 pound line and it really has a nice action that can throw lures as light as a soft plastic, a quarter half ounce soft plastic, or a one ounce metal, and really get some distance. The reel is very important also when you're Albion Benito fishing. You want something that has a good drag. This is a Stratic C3000, light enough to enjoy the fight. And then what I think is really one of the most important things when you're Albi fishing, no matter where you're doing it, but especially from a kayak where you wanna be able to cast to fish, is the line you choose. You definitely wanna go braided line for casting distance and strength, and you also wanna go with a lighter braided line. This is a 20 pound braid on this reel. It gives you a little more capacity, but more important again, that lighter braid casts farther. The braid you choose is really important. I used to think that braid is braid, it's all the same but they do make braids that are specially designed for longer casting. It's a much smoother finish, so look for those brands and for those versions of braid that are built for casting, that have a smooth finish. You'll notice when you're flinging lures, uh, the line goes out much easier. You can reach greater distances, and you can also get your lure to move faster through the air. So when those fish come up, you're really throwing a snap cast uh, you're getting right into them and your lure is hitting there before the fish disappear. Now from the braid, you definitely want to rig up a fluorocarbon leader. Albies and Bonito have great eyesight, so you want to go with fluorocarbon. I like about 15 pound test fluoro. Sometimes they're super picky and you have to go down to 12 pound. Something like this, a Seaguar Gold Label, it's got an incredibly thin diameter for the 15 pound test, so you get the strength of 15 pound test, but the diameter is closer to like a 12 pound test. Um, so that's something that I don't mind spending a little more on because I'm only doing Albie fishing for a small time of the year and I really want to make my shots count. I want to catch these fish and you don't go through a whole lot of it. This can last you quite a while. So I do a uni to uni knot from the braid to the fluorocarbon leader. You can definitely get a little more technical and do something like an FG knot. That'll go through the guides a little easier. But what I typically do from the kayak is I'll just tie this leader just long enough so that when the knot is at the top guide, I have about three or four feet of leader just right for casting. So I never really have to reel the knot through the guides. 
I can if I do, it's not a problem. It's not gonna cause any bad effects on the guides because it is a small knot, but that's kind of how I figure on my leader length. And then to attach the fluorocarbon leader to whatever lure I'm using, I just use a pretty basic clinch knot. To switch lures, you're gonna have to clip it off and tie in a new one, but you really want to avoid using clips. Less terminal tackle is better. Again, these fish have incredible eyesight, so keep it as simple and as realistic as possible. So when it comes to lures, when you're kayak fishing for Albies and Bonito, it's really not much different than what I would use when fishing from a boat. One good thing is that when you're in a kayak, you can really get closer to the fish than you would in a boat necessarily. Also compared to shore fishing, where you really need to worry about long casts, it's not quite as important when you're kayak fishing. So it gives you a little bit of a wider array of lures you can use. You can definitely use uh, some lighter soft plastics that are a little more realistic. That's one of my favorite things to do from the kayak. Starting on the lighter side of things, I'll use some of these Ronzi's. These are one of my favorites, especially when Albies and Bonito are really picky. Uh, nothing beats the action of a soft plastic like this. Again, it's a lighter lure, so you can't cast really far, but usually when you're in a kayak, you can get almost on top of the fish. And this has been a really productive lure for me. When you want a little more casting distance, some of the traditional Albi and Bonito jigs, either the resin epoxy plastic style jigs, which are really popular, or basic metal jigs, those all work really well. Got a bunch of lures that I use here for that, includes everything from an Exo jig by Game On, a couple Williamson jigs that I use, these are metal, and then a jig by Joe Bags and a jig by Albi Snacks, this is their hard snacks. They all have slightly different actions in the water, they all come in different colors. Basically, I just try different ones at different times and see what's working. Sometimes Albies and Bonita will show a clear preference for one over another, and sometimes they'll hit anything you throw at them. Some other lures I like to fish from a kayak are slightly larger lures, especially when the fish are on peanut bunker and they're on a little bit of a bigger bait. It means you can throw some topwater spooks, twitch baits, things like this, the Albie Snacks lure, the soft plastic. They're a lot of fun to fish for Albies with because you get to kind of see the, the strike a little better. Again, those only work in certain situations, but when you're out there in your kayak and you get into them and they're feeding heavy, they're eating bigger baits, it can be a lot of fun. Now, when you're fishing for these fish from a kayak, it's really important to just always be ready to cast. If you are using a pedal kayak, whether it's a Hobie or an Old Town or another model that allows you to keep your hands free, you're at a big advantage. You can come up to schools or you can move around and position yourself and always have that rod in your hand. Otherwise, if you're paddling, you can do it. It's just a little extra tricky. You have to put the paddle down and pick the rod up. Assuming you're in a pedal kayak, keep the rod in your hand. Make sure there's nothing behind you so you're ready at all times to cast. Have the bale open, have the lure hanging down, and just be on the lookout so that when you do see those fish, if they're within range, you can snap off a quick cast and get it right into the fish. One thing that you do have to pay attention with sometimes, especially if you're using a lighter lure, is think about where the wind is. So if it's on a breezy day, try to put yourself always upwind so that the fish, if they start to break, you're chasing the fish that are downwind from you and you can cast with the wind into the fish. You'll get a faster, more accurate cast that way. Be more likely to hook into them. Now, if you're out in the kayak and you see fish breaking on the surface a little distance away, but you think you can make it, a lot of times it's happening, you sprint toward them as fast as you can. One of the most important things I've found is that you don't want to cast while you're still covering some water and making some speed toward the fish. It's really important to slow down, let yourself drift toward them, or even sometimes I'll pedal backwards to stop myself. Otherwise, you cast into the fish, you're still moving forward, you put a big um, bow in your line, you put a lot of slack in there, and you can't start the retrieve right away. Come up on the fish as fast as I can. When I'm almost in casting range, I'll stop pedaling, maybe back pedal a little bit, wait for the boat to kind of coast a bit, see where those fish are. A lot of times, they're breaking, but they're heading in one particular direction, so I can get a cast out ahead of them. Then make that cast as accurate as you can. You wanna make sure you're not making a uh, rainbow cast. You don't wanna loft the bait up, because all that time that the bait's going through the air is time that the fish have to stop feeding and go down. So really wanna make snap casts, low angles as fast as you can. And that's one of the benefits of a kayak. You can really kind of shoot those lures at a low angle right through to where the fish are feeding and get it on them fast before they disappear. It's all about casting distance and it's all about timing, getting that lure on them as fast as possible while they're still feeding. So if you're approaching, say, some feeding albies and it's kind of a ball of fish and they're feeding, my instinct, I like to try and cast just beyond them so that I'm bringing the lure through them as they're feeding. I feel like that's often effective, but I know other people would say just try and land the lure right in the middle. A lot of times that splashdown will trigger a strike and the fish will hit. Sometimes I've had casts where I've actually flubbed the cast, it's landed short of the fish and it's fallen short of them and they've rushed out of the school and one has come out and grabbed it. 
It's tough. There really are no rules when it comes to these fish. They swim so fast, they feed so aggressively sometimes, and they can be so picky other times. The most important thing I can say is when they're up and feeding, get a lure somewhere near them as fast as you can, and that's your best chance to hook up. When you do hook up from a kayak, I mean, that's the whole reason we do this. That's the fun. Enjoy the run of the fish. Try to angle your kayak so that you're facing whichever way the fish is running so it can pull you a little bit. That way the kayak becomes part of the drag. It's part of how you fight it, but mostly it's just enjoy the fight. Let the fish run, be very aware, because they switch directions so much, especially Benito, as you get them close, a lot of times they'll dart underneath the kayak, so you have to be ready. Put that rod in the water so it doesn't get tangled up in anything under your kayak, especially if you have a pedal drive. Make sure your rod is long enough, you're gonna be clearing the bow, clearing the back. That's the whole fun of this, is just enjoying these fish as they run around in crazy directions, keeping them clear of everything so they don't break off, and getting to that last point where as you get the albi or the bonito up to the kayak, a lot of times they'll circle, and it's just a matter of working it up to the surface. When you get it close enough, because they're hard tail fish, you can grab the tail, use that to lift it into the boat, and there you go. And now it's just about unhooking it, getting your picture for Instagram, sending it back in the water, and as soon as you get that fish back in, lift your head up and look around and look for the next pot of breaking fish. And one more thing while you're out there having fun chasing albies and bonito, always be safe. Definitely make sure the conditions are good. Don't go out in bad weather. Always wear a PFD. You gotta have that on at all times. Make sure you're visible. It's a great idea to have a flag or something in the back. There'll be motorboats out there running around chasing the fish. Keep an eye on everybody. It's up to you to be defensive. Make sure you're not getting in the way where somebody racing toward a fish might, might um, be tempted to kind of cut you off or, or head into you. So keep your head on a swivel. Be safe out there. Have fun. Catch some albies and some bonito. And if you want to learn more about this, check out onthewater.com. We got a bunch of stuff there. You can also check out our video by Andy Nebreski on how to catch albies from shore. If you don't have a kayak and get a lot of, have a lot of fun getting into them from shore, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We got more videos coming out all the time and thanks for watching.